the help of Hashem, we are starting the class today, Parashat Vayera. I want to read the, from the Ramban, the commentary of the Ramban on the parasha. Um, but before we starting this commentary, I want to speak a little bit about who was the Ramban and why we are reading his commentary. So the Ramban, we know, was uh, one of the Rishonim. He was living uh, around 800 years ago. And the interesting point that uh, I want to speak about is that the Arizal defines the Ramban as the last of the Mekubalim. We know that there was many Mekubalim before, after the Ramban, before the Arizal, after the Arizal. But the Arizal is speaking about a certain tradition of Kabbalah that is, that is referring to that as a true, real Kabbalah that the Ramban was the last one to carry the lineage of this specific uh, inheritance of Kabbalah. We actually have the Rambam and the Ramban, right? The Rambam, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, and the Ramban, Rabbi Moshe ben Nachman, that they were living very close one to another. And the Arizal is saying that really the Ramban and the Rambam, they were parallel in their spiritual level that the Rambam was in, both of them in very, very high level. The Rambam in the left side and the Ramban in the right side. And here in this parasha, we have actually like an argument between the Rambam and the Ramban. What is the argument all about? That we see in the, in the parasha that Abraham Avinu, he had a vision of angels, right? So the argument is about how does it work? When you have a vision of angels, you see angels, you s there is angels physically, it's only conceptually, how does it work? So let's start with the approach of the Rambam. The Rambam, he writes that uh, it is, doesn't have, a, we don't have a commentary of the Rambam, on the Torah, but in the Moreh Nevochim of the Rambam, he writes, he writes about the parasha. So, the, so we know that it speaks about in the parasha that Avraham Avinu, he saw three people, and all those three people were angels. So the Rambam in Moreh Nevochim, he said that all of this is the a vision of prophecy. Okay, that's, that's the approach of the Rambam, that all of what happened, all of the conversation between Abraham and the angels was a vision of Abraham Avinu. The Rambam obviously doesn't argue that there is existence of angels. The Rambam, the Rambam agrees that there is existence of angels. The question is, are they taking a physical form or they are only spiritual identities and they come they come to the person in a way of prophecy. Basically, the Rambam, Ramban, that uh, we are concentrated about his commentary in the Torah now, is arguing with that concept. And he says, according to, the, to what the Rambam is telling us, so it means that Abraham Avinu didn't run to prepare them food, and Sarah didn't prepare them bread, and, the, and Abraham Avinu didn't, didn't uh, slaughter the shechita with the cows, all of those things, it was only like conceptually, only in the vision of Abraham Avinu. It never really happened in the physical. And the same argument is not only about this case, it's also about, for example, when Yaakov Avinu was fighting with the angel of, of Esav. So also that, according to the Rambam, it is only, only conceptually. The, the fight is in the, in the spiritual realm. It's not in the physical. And the, and, and the Ramban is asking the Rambam if that's the case. So like what made Yaakov Avinu to, 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 be, uh, to not walk properly afterwards? Why we're not eating the Gid and Asher according to that if nothing happened physically? So, and the same thing also about Lot in the parasha, that the angels were going, they, they, they went to destroy the Sodom. 
and they took Lot. So Lot, if the angel didn't come in the physical, so what happened with Lot? They, they didn't take him out of his house. He was not, he was not running away. All of that was only a, a spiritual vision that never happened in the reality. So the Ramban is, is like signing that argument and he says that those things is contradiction of the writings and no one should believe that. Okay, it's a hard, it's a very harsh thing to say about the Rambam, right? We say, uh, that's, that's the reason I said in the beginning, the Rambam was one of the greatest, right? But there is, there is a contradiction here. And the Ramban is, is arguing with the Rambam and he pushed that opinion away. So basically the, the Ramban is saying that there is one thing that is prophecy, that's one thing that we need to address and understand, like, what is it? How does it work? And there is a different thing of seeing angels. And he says that those cases in the Torah that, or the Tanakh, that people saw angels, not all of them were prophets. It's not, it's not something that is specifically for prophets. Prophet is a certain level, spiritual level. And to be able to see angels, it's not only by prophets. And the fact is, for example, in the parasha, that the people of Sodom, they were very far from being prophets. They were very low. And they saw the angels, right? They were, they, they, the, whole, the, whole, the thing that happened with, with Lot, it, they, the people there saw the angels. And an, another, another proof that the Ramban is bringing is from Daniel, that we see that Daniel is, not, is, is part of the Ketuvim. Is not part of the Nevi'im, right? So we we are considering Daniel to be a prophet, but in that in that understanding, the Ramban says he was not a prophet. He had visions that he saw angels and he was speaking with angels, Daniel. But it's a different thing. It's not it's not about prophecy. And another and the last proof that he brings that we know that Hagar in the previous parasha, she also saw an angel, right? And we don't count Hagar as a prophet. She had, she, she had the ability to see angels. She was trained in the house of Abraham Avinu. So, she, so she, had, she was able to see angels, but she was not a prophet. So that was the last proof of the Ramban. And now we want to understand more about prophecy, to understand the difference between now, them. To understand prophecy, um, we're starting with the highest level of prophecy. Who was the highest level of prophecy that we know? Moshe Rabbeinu, right? Chazal is telling us that the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu was higher than all of the prophecy of all of the higher prophets. prophets. And they say that the, the difference between them, that all of the prophecies, they saw something that is called aspaklaria she'ina meira. Okay, I, I, won't, I, I will explain the concept. Uh, and Moshe Rabbeinu, he had a level that is called Aspaklaria Meira, okay? Aspaklaria, it means like a window or mirror. So, so uh, you, can see, you can see through a window that is dirty, and you can see through a window that is clear, that you don't see the glass. So the, the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu was like a clear window. So the, you don't see the glass, you see directly what's... what's what there is the, in the other side. The prophecy of the other prophets, even though they had prophecy, but it was not as clear. It was like a little dim. So about Moshe Rabbeinu, it says, Tmunat Hashem Yabit. What does it mean, Tmunat Hashem Yabit? He had the, uh, uh, the prophecy as if the, the picture that Hashem gives him directly. Okay, it's not, it's not that he have the picture of Hashem because Hashem doesn't have a picture, but he, had the, the, he, he was able to see clear vision of the picture that Hashem is giving him. So this is mean the, 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 what the Torah is telling us about the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu, Munat Hashem Yabit. Also about Moshe Rabbeinu and also about other prophets that they had different levels of prophecy with not speaking about seeing angels. That's a different subject. It's a different thing. En el tema de los profetas, no estamos hablando de que si ven ángeles o no. Vemos aquí que ver ángeles es otro tema, es otra cosa. Now, 
Uh, another, another point that is interesting to bring into the discussion is Bil'am. Bil'am was a wicked guy, right? He, was, uh, he, was, he wanted to curse the Jewish people. He was hiring his services to curse people. It's not such a great thing. And he was still a prophet. He's called a prophet. So how can it be? How can it be that you have someone that is wicked like Bil'am and you have prophecy? So Chazal is, is obviously addressing that question. And they say that really Bil'am was not supposed to receive prophecy. The, the reason that he got prophecy is because that if there was no prophet except of Am Yisrael, so then the nations, the other nations would have said, why in the, in the end of time, why the Jewish people went in the way of Hashem? Because they had prophets that would lead them. And we didn't have a prophet. So that's why we did what we did. So Hashem says, Hashem will tell them, that's what the Chazal is telling us. Hashem will tell them, I gave you a prophet here. You see, Bil'am was a prophet. Obviously, it's not only Bil'am. There is all kinds of different individuals through the history of the world that had certain levels of prophecy, also by non-Jews. But from the same answer that Hazar is telling us about Bil'am, we can understand also about many, many other individuals. <clears throat> now, another, another subject that is also uh, connected with that is prophecy like Nebuchadnezzar or Paro, right? They, they went to sleep and they had a vision in their dream that is actually a prophecy, right? That uh, afterwards, Daniel was explaining the prophecy for Nebuchadnezzar and Yosef was explaining the prophecy for the, for the for Paro. So they had the vision of prophecy, even though they didn't have the meaning. So we see that there is a possibility of someone to receive a vision without understanding what the vision means. He doesn't know what does it mean. He needs someone else that is a wise person that will explain to him. So what does it mean, a wise person? Like it says about Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar said about Daniel that, that I, I see that you have the Ruach the, Elokimbo, the, that, that you have the spirit of Hashem in him. Nebuchadnezzar was saying that about Daniel, the same thing Paro was saying about about Yosef. So we know that Irat Hashem hi chokhmah, someone that have very, very strong Irat Shemaim, that is, that, is, that is the real wisdom. And someone that they have that level of Irat Shemaim, so then is able to have the understanding of all visions because, because he have that connection with Hashem. We see that uh, there is, there is a, prophecy like Paro and Nebuchadnezzar and also them they were not like high level of their character right they didn't work on their tikkun amidot so much um, quite the opposite and still they had prophecy so that is a different case it's not like Bil'am because they were in a, in a position of a king of the world right Paro in his time the Egypt was the biggest country the strongest country so he was like the king of the whole world, the known world. Same thing with Nebuchadnezzar. He was the, the, the strongest king in his time. So someone like that that is in a, in a very high position that is controlling that the known world. Um, so that, that is also a reason that Hashem is giving him a vision. Not because of him, because of his responsibility for the world. So someone that is taking a lot of responsibility for, for many people, for the world. So it might be that he will have a prophecy, even though he is not worthy, because of his position. We say that Abraham Vinu, he had the vision of angels. And with the vision of the angels, he had also prophecy, right? Abraham Vinu, he had both, right? So again, we have the prophecy, we have two parts, okay? The sight, to be able to see the vision. And another thing is to understand what the vision means. That's two parts within prophecy. Besides that, we have to be able to see angels. That's a different quality. And we learn that Avraham Avinu, we had all of those qualities. 
also prophetic the ascending and also he was able to understand to see angels. The Ramban uh, in his commentary is saying that there is um, a certain site that is called Galui Enaim. Okay, what is Galui Enaim? So literally it will mean revelation of the eyes. That, that there is something that the sight is revealing to the eyes something that usually the eyes cannot see, okay? And that we see, for example, by, by Bil'am, that, that, that Bil'am, it says about him that he was a Galui Naim, that he had the ability to, have, to see with his eyes something that other people don't see. Also, also about Elisha, he was praying on someone and he, he, he was asking Hashem, please give this person that level of revelation to the eyes that he will be able to see the, that thing that he, was, he needed to see. If you want to look at that, that's in uh, Melachim Bet uh, 617. <laughs> now, now about, about, about the angels, so we see that in this parasha and a few other places, the Torah is not calling the angels, it, it's not called Malach. Sometimes the Torah, the Tanakh is calling the angel Ish. Okay, Anashim. Abraham Avinu, it says in the parasha that he saw Anashim. And also about Yaakov Avinu, it, it says that he was fighting Ish Imo. He was fighting with Ish. So sometimes we're calling an angel Ish. Now what does it, what does it mean? What's the difference? So that's, that's the, the, the big chidush of the Ramban, that is the answer to the Rambam that we started with, that he says that whenever the Torah or the Tanakh is, is using the term Ish to describe an angel, it means that the spiritual angel took like a garment of human body, and then with the garment of human body, so anyone will be able to see that. Even, even someone that is that is not is not capable is not Jewish is not in a spiritual level does not it just it, it's possible to see an angel when he's taking a form of human body there is an there is a reality like that so in other words the Ramban is not really arguing that what the Rambam writes is a possibility it's true that there is a possibility that the angels will be seen in the in the in the in a form like uh, like a site of prophecy when they're not taking a garment of physical, okay? But the Ramban is saying that here in this parasha, you cannot say that because otherwise you, you're losing the whole, the whole, the whole, like what happened there, right? All of the stories that, that we learn in the parasha, you don't have it if you see that, if you said that everything was just prophecy. So there is something like that. It's possible to have sight of angels that they're not taking the physical form and that will be like prophecy, spiritual sight. And there is also reality, like in this parasha, like in other places, that we are using the term of Ish, not Malach, that that means that the angel took a form of human body, and then it can act like a human, to, like, like the angels are eating with Abraham Avinu, right? So they're acting like humans. There is, there is uh, just to, to finish that point, we see that Abraham Avinu, he prepared food to the angels and they ate. And we see that there was another case of Manoach and his wife, the, the parents of Shon and Gibor. So they prepared food to the angel and he didn't eat. Okay, he, 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 he vanished before, he, instead of eating, he vanished. So there is, there is an interesting point about it that what's the difference? Why the angels ate by Abraham Avinu and why they didn't eat by Manoach? The Ramban in the parasha is mentioning that, but it doesn't explain that. He says that if you will have the merit, you will be able to understand why the angels didn't eat by Manoach and, they, the, the angel, and, he, and he ran away, not ran away, vanished, like disappeared. Uh, so it doesn't explain. But I want, to, I want to explain that last point, and with that, we will finish the class, and then I will give some time for questions with the help of us. Um, there is, as you know, or maybe you don't know, but I'll tell you now. 
there is meditations in the Kabbalah for everything, okay? One of the things that there is a lot of meditations about is for eating. There's many meditations, it's called, called Kavanot Achila, the meditation for eating. So within the meditations of eating, that the, it's brought down in the Sidur Rashash, the Arizal explains it, there is the meditation of eating of Manoach, and there is meditations of eating of Avram Avinu. Manoach and Avram Avinu, the fact that they had both of them, they had like that scenario of giving food to the angel. So in the, in the, in the way of the Kabbalah, we explain that not only as, as a physical scenario that happened in the history, we also explain that it is a, a, a whole set of meditations. The set of meditation of the eating that Avraham Avinu is, is related with, and a whole set of meditations of, for eating that Manoach is related with. So there is, there is, a, there is a, obviously a lot of details that I cannot uh, explain right now, but I'm just saying that there is a different, it's two different levels. The level of the meditations of Avraham Avinu, of the eating, is much, much higher. And there is Sidurim that they, they didn't write the, the meditation of the eating of Avraham Avinu, only the meditations of Manoach, because they, 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 they understand that this is meditations that are relevant for most of the people. This is something that, that, that is uh, more relevant, but the meditation of Avraham Avinu is, is very, very high, very, very lofty. So many, many Sidurim that they write the meditations of the eating, they didn't write it. So <clears throat> when, I, when I published my Sidur, I was arguing with the person that was doing the typesetting for me. I wanted to put in the meditation of Avraham Avinu also. And he said, no, it's Sidur for beginners. Just leave it with, the, with just meditation of, of Manoach. It's enough. And, and we left it this way. But Bezrat uh, Hashem, I hope that uh, one day we will have the, the opportunity to go deeper to the technical meditations and to understand all the details of the meditation, also of Manoach, also of Avraham Avinu. But for now, we will leave it with this. So if there is questions, now it's the time to ask. Yes, uh, Laila for, for you, just a, a, a little question. Uh, we heard in the, in the parasha uh, that uh, first the Shekhinah come to, uh, to Abraham Avinu and he start talking with the, with, with, with the creator. Then come the, 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 Malach, the Malachim and they start talking with the Malachim, uh, Abraham Avinu start talking with the Malachim, and between them start, uh, there is a conversation that uh, uh, Hashem is saying about Sarah, that she's in the, in the, behind the, the curtain and everything, and it's like a Hashem is talking. My question is, the part of Hashem talking with uh, Abraham Avinu was a kind of, of, of understanding with the Shekinah, listen to the Shekinah, or, or the, the three messengers, the three angels, the three malachim were saying also the part of the, of the, of, of, of Hashem, of the Shekinah. Okay. I'm saying that Abraham Avinu, he had also the, the sight of the angels, but also he had prophecy. So to hear the voice of Hashem, this is prophecy. This is not seeing angels, right? So when, when, he, when Abraham Avinu have is speaking with Hashem also in the beginning of the parasha. Before he saw the angels, he was speaking with Hashem. Hashem came to come to to comfort him with right with the after the Brit Milah. That's the beginning of the parasha. And then and right. So there is the vision. There is we didn't okay. So that's really I didn't I didn't explain that point that within prophecy there is prophecy by sight and there is prophecy by hearing. So that that's another point. That in that point, that what we're, what you're asking about is a kind of prophecy that Abraham Avinu had. It is not sight; is hearing a voice. And, but this is also kind of a prophecy. So one one of the, one interesting point about it that also Sarah heard the same thing, right? So the the voice was not only heard by by Abraham; it was heard also by Sarah. 
And Chazal is telling us that really Sarah was a higher level of prophet than Abraham. Yeah. But that 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 will be another another class. Thank you.